Now, something fun that I had uh, read about you, you've got over 10,000 different comic books, including the one there behind yeah. you. Yeah, that's right. I got there's just one behind me. Um, but yeah, that's right. I've been collecting since uh, I don't have the age, but certainly since about that age, probably 12 or 13 at least or earlier when I decided, hey, uh, someday I'm going to be a writer. I think probably the comic books and reading so many different kinds of stories was a big part of that. And I just have never kicked the, the hat. I just still enjoy them and I still read every one. I'm, I've never been... I never turned into like sort of the collector that, you know, just buys for, for value. And in fact, I don't really, what, the reason I still have 10,000 is because I don't really resell them. I, I think that someday I might, right? Someday it'll be like my, my, you were talking about retirement in, in the earlier part of the conversation. Maybe it'll be my, my retirement fund or something. Um, although I don't have any like, you know, this one's worth like thousands of dollars. I have some, right, that are probably hundreds, but, and enough of them that they would add up after a while. But, you know, I also have plenty that are probably not even worth the, the cover price I paid for <laughs> as well. Um, but yeah, I just, I still go, I don't, I can't say I go every week because I wish I had a store closer to me. So I don't have something that's, you know, within 20 minutes that I would just, if I did, I would go like every Wednesday still and just, you know, comic book come out on Wednesday, I would go. And, and a lot of that is in Dan and Mass because, the kids are such big comic book. They're, all, they're big baseball fans, but there's also a big uh, comic book plot in, in Dan and Mass. And a lot of that just comes from me, right? From the kids go every Wednesday and they're, they're so dedicated to this uh, comic book that I created inside of that book called uh, Captain Nexus and the Nexus 5, which is sort of a, you know, in, in the last Super Chef, there's these send-ups we've been talking about to Willy Wonka and all that. In Dan and Mass, there's some send-ups to Fantastic Four. You know, the Nexus Five, Fantastic Four, right? So, it's, and they're a family. And but anyway, um, yeah, I have I have all those comics, and uh, probably every three weeks or so, I'll get to the store. I'll make a special trip on like a Saturday morning or something, and get to the the comic store. I have a few around town that I'll I'll visit, kind of rotate around amongst. And I'll get like three weeks worth of comics. And uh, of course, the bill is higher than I used to be, <laughs> both because they cost more now and, and because uh, being a working person, I, I have a, when I was young, I think it was, I had a budget, right? And so I had to really just, you know, pick what were my favorites, like get two or three in a, in a week or something. But now I, I go a little bit maybe too crazy with uh, the big stack I bring home, especially because it's over three weeks. So. You need to calm them someday. Uh, that you, yeah. what, what issue, what, what stories are you following? What are your best reads? Yeah, so, um, I, and I don't know if I know how to pronounce his name, but I'll, I'll talk about him since, uh, since Sweet, Tooth, Sweet Tooth just started on, on uh, Netflix on Friday. I'm a big Jeff, it's either Lemire or Lemire uh, fan. He's a writer um, who, who writes like different comics, like, uh, and some are independent or for Dark Horse, and sometimes I work for Marvel DC, but like Sweet Tooth, he, he does the um, Ascender and Descender. Um, he does a series called Black Hammer, which is to me really cool because it's got all these send-ups to different heroes. Like Black Hammer is, um, well, the original Black Hammer is is a, a black superhero who has a hammer and he's very, it's very much like, okay, this is Thor, but he's, he's black with a hammer, right? So they called him Black Hammer. And there's one that's kind of like a little a girl that's kind of very reminiscent of uh, of Shazam, except instead of being a little boy that says a word and turns into um, um, uh, an adult superhero, she's a an adult woman who says a word and turns into a, a, a young girl who's a superhero, right? So it's everything is like sort of flipped, and he's it's very creative, and and of course Sweet Tooth is I don't know if you've seen that on Netflix, but it's very creative. It's about these hybrids. Uh, that's episode three. Okay, so there you go. I've only watched one episode because I was on vacation over the weekend. Um, so we just watched one last night. Um, but yeah, so I like those kind of stories. I mean, I like all kinds of stories, but of course I do collect the superheroes. I still collect, I, I was just reading a Batman, um, I guess last night or part, partly this morning. So I still get like the tr very traditional like Batman, Daredevil, that kind of stuff. Um, when I was young, one of my favorites was Swamp Thing. Like when Alan, I don't know if you know Alan Moore, but Alan Moore was this 
sort of Neil Gaiman um, contemporary. Uh, you know, most people know Neil Gaiman as the writer of Sandman. I also read Sandman, but Alan Moore, Alan Moore was a, a big time writer, did the Watchmen and those kind of things. And he did a run on Swamp Thing. And um, it was funny because I was in a store a couple of weeks ago that I don't usually go to. And there was a, um, a young kid with his father and they were looking for a certain issue of Swamp Thing, which is very old from like the 80s. And even the store owner was like, you know, that's kind of expensive. Was, in my mind, I was I was checking out with my stack. I was like, I have that, you know, <laughs> but I didn't want to sell it. So I didn't I didn't bring it up because, it was, you know, I, w I wasn't going to propose, you know, exchanging information and, and selling it to him because it's just too it's part of my childhood. Right. So it's, you know, I, I, I hang on to him at least for now. Last time you could surely somebody's put together the Alan Moore Swamp Run thing and just a standalone anthology that you can buy for ten bucks or whatever. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm, I think I even have it. I think my, my, my wife bought that for me, I think, a couple birthdays ago, like the hardcover edition with the same issues that I already own, but they're so stacked away in boxes and things. And she knows how much I like that story that I th she bought me like the you know, they come out with like the deluxe editions and the, they have the hardcover and they're oversized. And it's like the behind the scenes, you know, of the stories as well are, are in the, the thing. Um, I have a few of those and Swamp Thing is one of them because uh, I'm just, just such a fan of that whole that whole run. Yeah. Right now, my, uh, my big pleasure is uh, to Black is the uh, I think it's just called Superman and Lois is the new show on the WZ. I don't follow no CW. I'm, I'm so uh, call it. <laughs> uh, I, I don't follow all the CW multiverse, but this right. particular version of Superman is just so fantastic. He's got teenage sons. And, oh, this is, it's a version of the story I love, but I haven't quite seen this before. Go on. Right. I've heard a lot of good things about that. I have to confess, I haven't watched any any episodes or even a minute of it, but I've seen quite a bit of, of good publicity about that version. So I'm going to have to to maybe find my way to it somehow, uh, somehow soon. But yeah, I've heard a lot of good things about that version. Well, the good news is by the time this is out, the steamed audience will probably will have the whole season available, uh -huh. uh, waiting for them to, to binge watch, whereas I'm stuck in one a week. But that's okay, because every week I've got a little something special to forward to. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes it's good to have that old TV mode where it's like once a week. I, it's it's a, uh, I don't know, it's, it's debatable, right? I mean, um, we did Mayor of Easttown, which a lot of people did, and um, it was a struggle to wait every week to find out, you know, the next thing you wanted to find out was such a good mystery. To me, it was anyway. Um, but like with last night, I was introducing, my wife doesn't read comics or anything. She waits for me to say, this is a good story that come out of comic books. So I was telling her that about Sweet Tooth and she does like the, sto the story, she just doesn't want to read comics. So so she watched like Sweet Tooth last night, she watched um, the first episode with me and then she was like, oh, we have to wait, you know? And I said, no, they're all here. Um, and she was like, oh, great. But then I said, but I'm tired. So let's watch it, <laughs> let's, let's cut it at one episode. So then she got mad all over again because she, she really enjoyed it. Um, so it's funny, I think, you get used to all the episodes being released at once and having that access, but I do kind of like that old, and maybe just because I grew up on it, that old way that TV worked, like with Mayor of Easttown, how it worked, where you, you know, the way HBO does it, because it's like, I don't know, it builds that suspense or, or like the old serials in the movie theaters where they had the cliffhanger and then you had to wait till the next. I mean, not that I really experienced that, but I've read about them, right? Because it's a little bit before my time, but. Um, there's something too like the cliffhangers and waiting the week and you know it, it adds to the experience maybe a little bit i think but it's um my my tv time is limited not because like and i'm better than you i read more kind of way but because i play video games so all right well i could do one or the other and mostly i choose video games yeah i recommend the, the new the hbo version of his damon lindelof did the watchman Right. Uh, that one came out every week, and that was perfect because my wife was extremely, she does not do the superheroes off of it. She was extremely interested in that show so we could watch one episode, and we had all week to go and read the history associated with what we were seeing on screen and get caught up. We'll reread the original Watchmen to right. 
oh, right, Zack Snyder changed things and fixed the ending, but the original ending was pretty good, too. I, I yep. just divided the audience. Yep, I said it. Snyder's ending was better, made more sense. Anyway. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I actually like Snyder's ending, too. So let's, yeah. And I was an original, like, Watchmen fan. Like, the, the at the time it came out, I have the not the trade, but the individual issues, you know, so and I was reading it as it came out back in the in the mid 80s. But uh, yeah, I agree with you. And, and I loved the Watchmen, the HBO Watchmen series. And that was one where I couldn't interest her just right away in it. So I did it on my own. And then she started, the more she started to read about it, she was like, um, did you watch that? Can we watch that? And I was like more than happy to re do a rewatch which was her first time because I, I just thought that was just a, a fantastic take on where it could go, you know, next. Um, and in my opinion, I think a lot of people liked it because I, I know it got a lot of good publicity. So, yeah. I would have liked to have known a little bit more about Owl Man, but that's, that's just my preference. Hide out. That's just my preference. Yeah. And that was one where specifically because we couldn't, we couldn't shotgun the whole thing, uh, which, which I've done occasionally, but I try not to do that because if I really like a thing, there's not that many great things that I'm really going to like. So even like with Sweet Tooth, it's all available now, but I'm going to dole that out slowly over a couple of weeks so I have something to, to, to continue to enjoy. But with Watchmen, it was absolutely perfect because you needed that week to go back and like, oh, they didn't teach the Tulsa Race Massacre in school. Let right. me get caught up on that. Uh, and then I'll have greater appreciation coming into the next episode. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, even though we, by the time we got to it, it was something we could we could sort of binge. Um, we still did a lot of that research in between, especially in the the Tulsa, you know, massacre because it was it was so undertaught and just you know in an awful sort of way. Um, not even sort of, but in a definitely awful way. But uh, yeah, so I see what you're saying there, and that is yeah. So. Again, same point, you know, I can see the good and bad, right, of either one of those uh, approaches to it. Sometimes it's good to wait the week, sometimes it's good to binge. Yeah. We'll see where it lands. I, I read something where they said that, of course, you know, we jumped into this binging with Netflix and the way they decided to do it, and then all the other streaming services did that, um, except for like HBO. But um, that now they're kind of reconsidering it, that they're losing. And I, I think I skimmed this article, so I may not be representing it well. I hate when people do that. But I think what I read was that they were kind of losing audience because of the approach. Like they would get so many episodes in and then they wouldn't just wouldn't finish streaming it. And they're actually finding that people stick with it more if they go back to the releasing it one, one a week. So there's a lot of debate. Um, as I understand it anyway, at these services to maybe have certain shows that they go back to the once a week or maybe completely go back. I don't know. I don't speak for Netflix, but <laughs> they might. There might be a change someday, at least with certain shows. I don't know. Uh, eventually, I'm sure there'll be a new, another new format and everything will, will change again. But right. so long as everybody's competing and spending ridiculous amounts of money to capture my attention, even when it's a failure, that's great. I'd we would. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. So many options. I mean, the problem now, right, is too many options. That's uh, more the the issue um, sometimes, right? Because it's like I don't know what to watch, or you know, now Netflix has that 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 um, feature where you you just can pick it and it'll kind of pick what to watch for you, which I've never actually clicked on, but I see it there, and I'm always like, you know, I don't want to I don't want to get to that point, right, where. <laughs> I'm so indecisive that I have to have the, the service pick. I need to pick something on my own, you know, even if I watch endless trailers or whatever until I finally get to making some choice. Uh, so I'm going to hold out and not click on that, you know, pick for me, whatever it's called, uh, thing, because it just seems like uh, that's giving it. I don't know. 